Okay, go ahead and explain to me what's what what was happening with your eye. They yeah. they stole all your products. The gang stalkers came in here and gaslighted you and stole the stuff that you needed to take care of your eyes, right? Yeah, I had bought everything because you have to be very sterile with shoguns, you know, when you have dry eyes. <clears throat> and uh, anyway, I went out. I bought uh, everything to be sterile. I know how to be sterile, uh, you know, use, uh, you know, sterile, uh, be sterile like like they used to teach you back in, the, huh, back in the old days. They used to teach you about sanitation, all that stuff, you know, and I did make straight A's and, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, first aid, you yeah. know. And I worked in a hospital clinic at that time, so forth. I was still a teenager. I learned all that stuff. Because I guess I thought at one time that I might become a nurse. So anyway, this nurse uh, took, uh, took, made, took time to really train me from, you know, taking care of uh, kids, sick kids, and uh, giving shots and... Uh, Feeding them and uh, you know the whole whole nurses uh, training and so anyway, when I was told I had Shogun's, uh syndrome, dry eyes in the uh, extreme you know extreme case, uh, you know uh, I forget what number is it number four or something the last uh, you know the last of it, but anyway, uh, so I was told I was going to have to watch. Uh, watch, you know, take care of myself because there was no treatment uh, they could offer me. Uh, now, what so. is Sjogren's Syndrome? It's no tears, your eyes, you don't produce your dry, mucus. You don't pr produce no body oils. No mucus, no tears, no That's nothing, right. no saliva, no nothing. Exactly. So, what, consequently, what happens is your uh, mucus membranes without lubrication, if you don't keep them artificially lubricated with artificial tears and artificial saliva, they ulcerate. You, exactly. You get ulcers and tears in your eyes and in your lips. Yes. And your mouth gets bloody. A lot of times it looks like you have on dark lipstick because <laughs> your your lips have cracked, but it's actually blood. Yes, yes. The and, these, the and, these exactly. and these gang stalkers and these gang stalkers have come into your house, broken into your house, and stolen the supplies that an eighty year old needs to take care of her Sjogren syndrome so that her eyes don't ulcerate. Is that correct? That's correct, as well as my ears, uh, you know, gee whiz, I have to, there's no, you know, I have to make sure that uh, even my ears uh, don't, uh, don't impa uh, impact, you know, because it, there's no oil, so I have to use... You don't uh, even produce earwax. I do produce earwax, but it impacts because there's no oil. You have to have oil in your skin, your earwax. And you have to have <clears throat> mucus in your uh, nose, and uh, I mean, your skin is dry. You can't even uh, uh, flip uh, a page without without no moisture in your hands, your fingers. It's hard for you to even operate your smartphone because the screen doesn't recognize your fingers because there's no oil in your fingers. I guess so. I guess that's it. That explains it. But getting back to, uh, you know, plantation. Okay, I uh, I bought in advance, you know, because I knew, you know, that once I diagnosed that I was going to be, uh, you know, on my own leaving the hospital care, which was UCSF. I went there eight, ten years before they could diagnose me with this Shogun syndrome. Went through all kinds of testing. So anyway, I bought stuff, uh, well, since uh, there's no treatment for it, I'm gonna have to take care of myself. So just from uh, sanitation, uh, you know, training and stuff like that. Uh, in the early years, and plus uh, I was very interested in biology, and I made good grades in that. But anyway, I uh, knew what to do, so I just went little by little, because I'm on limited income anyway, so little by little I bought all my supplies 
from gauze to uh, to uh, eye cleaning, you know, equipment to wash, to wash my eyes out. Then I bought some syringes because uh, I knew I'd be using some oils and stuff like that with, uh, you know, bacteria free. You couldn't, uh, you couldn't contaminate none of your equipment. So I bought all that stuff to use to take care of myself. Whoa, boy, my arm is gone bad. That's one drop. Now the other one. Oh, shoot, I missed it. Ah. God, oof, that burns. Been dry too long. Okay. Whoops, where's the Kleenex? Oh, I don't have no Kleenex. Mm -hmm. Oh, crap. Look at the junk that's out of my eye. Yes, sir. Oh yeah, I can see it. Let me let me try to zoom in on it. Yeah, I can see the matter right there. Yeah, Beverly used to call those eye boogers. Hmm. Yep. She had them. Yeah, it it was drug induced though from uh, her narcolepsy, the uh, stuff that she had to keep her awake, like Silert caused uh, dehydration and what have you. Mm, mm, mm. Hers used to be really, really bad. I know sometimes uh, mine gets so bad until my, my eyes stay st get stuck. Yeah. First time that happened to me, I got scared. I got scared. I said, what the heck happened? One of my eyes won't open. It was actually <laughs> stuck. Wow. <laughs> I had to I had to pull pull around on it to get it unstuck. Boy, what yeah. a mess. It's not an easy thing to do, you know. It would sure help. I never did replace the eye wash and stuff, you know, that I had or you know, or the syringe. Uh the syringes could be used for cleaning the air wax out, you know, keeping it clean and all that stuff. And your nose, as it is, shoot, uh, you know, I'm supposed to use a uh, nose spray as well. <sighs> and then uh, my skin will just crack from uh, dryness if I don't keep uh, lotion on it or oil on it. Especially, I shouldn't be washing dishes, you know keep my hands out of water as much as possible. But every time I take a bath, I have to re-oil uh, my whole body. Hmm. And if I don't, I'm gonna itch and scale, and then uh, my skin will just start cracking, start bleeding. And then they steal all your stuff you need to take care yeah, of yourself. Yeah, yeah. You see, I don't know if you actually, uh, <laughs> took matters into your own hands in a case like that I don't know if that would be condemnable by God or not I, I really tend to think that it wouldn't I don't know uh, but because Jesus didn't uh, don't I have cleanups in here no Jesus didn't I condemn I thought I did Jesus didn't condemn James when uh, he cut the ear off of the slave when they were coming to arrest him. Hmm, you mean I should go around cutting people's ears off? No, 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 but what I'm saying is, Ooh, is that... This is awful, look at that. The whole thing is totally from one top to the other. Look up. Yeah, yeah, I can see it clearly there. Yeah, it was all matted in the corner of your eye before you put the eye drop in. Mm. 
Yeah. But that's what would happen to you uh, on a continuous basis. I gotta basis. get a Kleenex. I can't stand this. I gotta okay. get it off. Okay. Move. Guys. So you just touched the motherfucker and it turns off. Excuse me. Did it turn off? Yeah, it turned off. So this is. I'm gonna have to splice them together. But go ahead. So anyway, uh, I had everything, you know, all neatly put away and, uh, you know, all the alcohol and all the uh, eyewashes and the, and the uh, uh, alcohol, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And then uh, I also had some uh, anti um, antibacterial uh, ear drops and all that stuff got stolen, all my medical records that I had got stolen right uh, in my apartment, in the bathroom where I had stuff, you know, and sent, you know, kept it in, in containers and, and all that stuff. I came home one day and I went to get to something, I think, uh, you know, something like uh, a gauze or something like that to... Uh, you know, take uh, wash my eyes and rub uh, my eyes and stuff uh, with the, you know, the junk uh, that comes out. Instead of tears, you just get this white little gel-like mass that comes uh, out of uh, your ears, or not your ears, but your eyes, and it stays inside, so you have to uh, wash it out with eye moisturizer, eye moisturizer, because water burns the eyes since they're so dry so you have to use uh, eye drops uh, to be comfortable so anyway uh, I went to get some of my stuff to uh, I think it also you have to use uh, nose drops too and I had all that stuff to keep your uh, nose moisturized so anyway, I went to get something. It was, I think it was for my eyes, gauze or something to wipe my eye out uh, with uh, just a damp cloth. And then uh, used the moisturizer inside my eye to rinse out the gel and it comes out to the surface and you have to keep wiping it off with uh, either a gauze, which is lint free because cotton's not too good, not unless it's wet or else lint free a uh, 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 cloth to clean your eyes out with. So anyway, uh, nothing there. I looked for my eye wash that I had bought, you know, uh, to, walk, keep, uh, to wash my eyes out with uh, early in the morning, you know, when you first get up. So anyway, nothing yeah. there. Then I looked for my uh, syringes, for my... I just went to looking for everything I had, uh, you know, bought in there. You know, for the, when the time came uh, that I had to use all these products, you know. And so anyway, it was all gone. Been all taken out. All my medical records were taken right out of my drawers and stuff. And some of those were one-of-a-kind, irreplaceable, uh, you know, uh, reports from years back. In other words, these people that came in here, and when I called the police, they told me it was EAH staff members that did this, were doing this. Uh, in other words, they had the master key, so they'd come on in and take your stuff. Uh, steal, you know, when you're gone. It's called gaslighting. And then, Gaslighting is the term that is used. Now, at that time, I don't think it was too familiar, so I hadn't heard of it. All I knew was uh, uh, a home been, invasion, as been, they called you'd it. You've been burglarized. It, yes, absolutely. Because, Which in California is a strike. Yes. Well, when it comes to that, if it's a strike, ever done one of the employees that worked for EAH have a strike on them if they get caught. Not just one, because this happened over a process, a period of years, that they did this. And we tried everything to try to secure your place, including uh, closed circuit TV and everything, and none of it would work. But you see, we didn't know who gang stalkers were. We didn't even know the term. 
of what we know now. We understand now, thanks to Alex Jones, what gang stalking and organized stalking is about and how expansive it is. And all of those who participate are absolute worst criminals there are. Uh, child abusers, elder abusers, uh, criminals of all sorts that run around under government sanction abusing innocent people like you and me. Mm-hmm. Correct. Correct. They all need to be struck out, put under the penitentiary. We need to have something like Nuremberg trials, and they all need to be tried for their crimes, which probably much of them are guilty of murder. That is the goal of gang stalking, is for you to kill yourself or in some way have an accident, or sometimes they just outright kill you. But it's a Stasi program, it's Nazism, that's updated modern day, Cointel Pro, FBI, run by the FBI, and uh, infiltrating our society, which is bringing our country down. Well, it's amazing. A lot of people have, uh, actually, I've lived here, what, uh, the 20 years, December 1st. Anyway, I uh, have seen for a whole lot of things, you know, happen in this building. I've seen people that were extremely healthy when they moved here, full of life, go down, 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 and then just die off. From healthy to sick, ill, pneumonias, rampant in this place in winter and summer. The places that downright filthy, you can't keep your carpets clean. The doctors have told me, have your carpet removed. Everything I've ever asked Well, for. it's not just that, Ma. You know, Brittany Murphy, the actress uh, that played in a lot of the Prophecy movies, who died four years ago with her husband, Jack, uh, <clears throat> I forgot his name, they were complaining of being poisoned in their own home, being gassed in their own home. And we've had that experience here. In actuality, many of these uh, corporate-run properties, uh, apartment complexes and what have you, have a system of employing gang stalkers that when they encounter a tenant that they want to evict or don't like, they poison the environment that the tenant has to live in so the tenant has to move. It's extrajudicial punishment. Well, there's been a lot of them that died right here, right, right in the building. Uh, yeah, because they were probably poisoned to death. Well, I've heard a uh, mold. The doctor was looking at my eyes. I went for some glasses and a checkup, you know, on my eyes. And uh, he asked me, the doctor asked me, Miss Goodman, do you have carpet in your apartment? And I said, yes. He said, does it have mold? I said, I don't know. I said, but big old spots come up through, uh, through the carpet every time you vacuum. Uh, another black uh, black spot comes up through the carpet. So I th think that's mold. And he said, yes. He said, you know, he said, I think this is causing some of your eye problems. Yeah, sure. A lot of your doctors are complicit in the gang stalking because they're... Uh Members Not of, all of them, because this one I had was good. Well, they're members of InfraGuard, and those that aren't uh, are a lot of times misinformed and buy into the popular line. But that's what Brittany Murphy's mother thought, that it was mold that actually was in her uh, place that killed her. That's just a cover story for this damn poisoning that these fucking satanic people do, and they kill good people doing this stuff. Brittany Murphy's father had her hair tested recently, after he was able to get it released after a lengthy court battle with uh, Los Angeles County, he had her hair tested by an independent lab, and they came up with ten different heavy metals that were way above levels that should have been normal. And those levels coincided with rat poison. They were fumigating her and her husband with rat poison. Do you think I should get my hair tested since I'm having, uh, you know, such a... Uh Difficulty with uh, yeah. If we recently. could afford, if we could afford some independent lab tests, but you see, all those things are expensive, and that's another goal of the gang stalkers is to impoverish you so that you can't uh, defend yourself. They they pick on vulnerable people, who are usually very good people, 
and innocent of any crimes, probably the best people in society, but that's because they're satanic. But yeah, we should get our hair uh, samples taken, tested, if we can find an independent lab to do it. You know, I used to come in sometimes, uh, you know, from uh, having spent the whole day, you know, uh, going through test after test, uh, you know, at UCSF. And uh, it was an all-day trip for me from San Francisco, uh, round trip, you know, leave early in the morning. I wouldn't get back until after dark that night in the evening. Anyway, I'd come in, I'd uh, go, you know, I'd be hungry and stuff like that because I was about three-hour uh, ride one way. So I'd come home and I'd go to the refrigerator. I always kept, you know, uh, quick snacks. Because I'd be hungry when I came in. And I noticed a lot of uh, my uh, my yogurt, cottage cheeses, and a lot of other kind of, uh, you know, soft uh, things, uh, you know, like uh, Dream Whip, or I'd see finger marks where someone had just taken their finger and swiped the taste, I guess. So, uh, you know, I'd actually see the finger mark on, on the... Uh, on the uh, cream top. Yeah, they were adulterating your food. So what I would do is I would, uh, you know, if there was quite a bit of it, I would scoop the finger mark all, all out or the whole top of it, you know, before I would eat it. But uh, And you still ate it because you can't afford to throw away your food. You're on a fixed uh, disability income, so you can't throw your food away. That's right, that's right, but then uh, when you complain to the management, they don't do anything, you know, they don't, they, it's, oh, they do, do, you know, make remarks, oh, you're crazy, you're imagining things, gee, <laughs> uh, they don't bother to uh, check. Yeah, well, that's all part of that system that corporations use. Uh, they, A lot of these uh, corporations and companies have uh, are affiliated with InfraGuard, which is actually kind of like a civilian spy agency. But a lot of a lot of these positions that you have to take in uh, is that window open? Yeah, it is. Oh, shit. A lot of these positions, uh, like uh, management, property management, uh, and other positions of authority, come with the prerequisite that you have to engage in this gang stalking, organized stalking behavior. So uh, they like putting people in these key positions of control among around people's essentials that they can't do without, like food and housing and what have you. And uh, then that's, you know, that's why when you complain, you can't get any action is because they're damn gang stalkers themselves. Well, so anyway, well, I, I did call the police, you know, at first. Yeah, and a lot of police are gang stalkers, too. Well, you could have interrupted me. I can't even finish my sentence. So anyway, I did call the police at the beginning uh, when I noticed that uh, things weren't right every time I came home. And uh, so anyway, to jump ahead, uh, surprisingly, there's been so many other people, but they were afraid to say anything or just knew that nothing would be done. So they just uh, uh, quietly went on about their business with their losses, the stuff they lost, and the stuff that would have been tampered with, and said nothing. And one lady and I became, uh, you know, close friends. And uh, we talked about, uh, you know, this stuff. She said she moved here to Casadobe from Richmond because uh, in Richmond, she was having uh, the same entry when she'd go to work. She'd have entry and, and things taken and stolen and stuff. So she made, moved to Casadoli thinking it would be better here. And she told me, she said, uh, I'm so uh, disappointed. It's just as bad here. The same thing is happening here as what I moved from. She said, I come home after a day's work, and uh, things are all moved around, examined, and uh, it's just not in the same place when, uh, you know, and I, I, I always lock my door, you know. I said, yeah, but, uh, you know, they have glass keys, all the uh, 
maintenance, the whole uh, people that work uh, for EAH have, uh, have, ma uh, have pass keys. And she said, yes, I know. She said, she said, uh, so what I'm going to do now? She said, I'm sick, you know. She said, I have cancer. And uh, until when I get better, she said, I'm going to start looking for another place. That's the only way you can, uh, you know, uh, get away from it is to keep moving from place to place. Because in these group, group home-like buildings uh, where, where senior buildings, they're all alike, she said. Well, actually what she didn't know probably because she doesn't know how to use the internet is that gang stalking is a worldwide phenomenon and it's a depopulation program but you can't run from it because even if you go to another country they'll pass your file to their network over there and they'll be waiting for you when you're over there but anybody who can google gang stalking can find all this stuff out you know real quick but yeah. uh, this is a real story of the effects and tolls that it actually takes on innocent elderly you know and uh, vulnerable yeah, because, people uh, you know gee whiz you get fragile or you get older you know but uh, and now have you ever been to jail in your life mom have you ever been arrested no never committed a crime no your, your driving record is clean we just went to uh the insurance place and she said you had a clean driving record and you're 79 years old so what did you do do you think to deserve this kind of treatment in your senior years I wish I knew I guess I was just born at the wrong time wrong place wrong uh, wrong country yeah But then and again, it's not really <laughs> the fault of uh, the criminal element of our government here because it's a worldwide phenomenon. It's just criminals in high places of authority, period, all over the damn world. Well, obviously it existed before I was even born. It's from the Stasi. It's from East Germany. Uh, they exported it and all these other countries adopted it. That's where its roots are. It's it's Zerzetzum. Zerzetzum. It's, uh, which is German for deconstruction. They're trying to take you apart piece by piece. Hmm. They're trying to get you to kill yourself, is what it is. Well, I'm a Christian, I'm religious, and, uh, that is not in my category. Yeah, it's satanic. They're a bunch of abortionist baby killer, baby sacrificing, child molesting, drug dealing, uh, abusing, sexual deviant uh, devil worshippers is what they are. Well, <laughs> I guess it's going to continue until, uh, until uh, the Lord Besides, he, it's enough. Right now, he's cleansing us because all these storms, all these hurricanes, all these floods, and all these um, uh, fires, that's in the Bible. So, he, for soon, he's going to get tired of it. He's coming back. And everyone that did all this stuff, that got away with it, it's going to burn and... Uh, I guess is they're going to burn from according to the Bible. Yeah, for all eternity. But first, they're going to be judged at the great, great white throne of judgment. And they're going to answer to God, to an angry God, for everything that they did. But we as Christians won't, because Jesus has paid the price for us. They have that chance too, but I doubt many of them will take it up. A lot of them that live here, surprisingly, that are seniors, that are on their last leg before death, don't believe in in the uh, in church or the religion or the Bible. They go to church every Sunday, dress up real nice, and then uh, go and sit and I guess maybe pray whatever they do. I don't know. But they go to church every Sunday and then come back out and they, and uh, huh, 
first thing out of their mouth is, let's go get a drink. Let's go get a get get sex, I guess. Or uh, I know they <laughs> they don't care. They don't uh, deprive themselves of anything. They turn right around and do everything that uh, I consider sinful, and most Christians consider sinful. So they're a bunch of hypocrites. Yeah, they well, carry a Bible in their hand and come right back out and say say the worst uh, things and, you know, curse you out and treat you, you know, they're just a bunch of uh, mean, spirited, spirited people. Yeah, well, uh, that's part of the Gang Stalker Handbook is that they are supposed to keep their reputations up by going to church and doing good works, you know, because uh, they want to remain hidden and beyond suspicion. But uh, by your by their fruits shall ye know them. So it's not too hard to spot them out if you're a real Christian and spiritually discerning. When you see them, uh, you know, acting in opposition to what the Bible says and to what they've just uh, espoused to you, then you know what they are. But, uh, yeah, they've got clerics, you know, people that are holier than thou that will go to court, you know, to testify, to bail them out for their crimes and to try to condemn you and win the hearts of the jury or what have you. But... Uh, yeah, they're all a bunch of uh, Satanist, devil-worshipping uh, hypocrites that uh, aren't going to want to go to hell. And that's what makes me so mad, is that when it's time for them to go to hell, they're going to be screaming, gnashing their teeth, cursing God, not wanting to go, blaming everybody but themselves. But, hey, I just say to them, when it's time for you to go to hell, hold your head up high, because you worked hard for this. Well... It sure hasn't been easy, believe me. Gee whiz, my skin is all dry. You know, my skin gets so dry with this shogun thing. And uh, I'm supposed to keep my hands out of water. I'm not supposed to be on carpeting. And uh, basically, uh, huh, I don't really care for carpeting anyway. And I've lived in places where... I, I like little throw rugs, but, you know, basically just for decoration, mostly. But, uh, uh, carpet is a, is a germ carrier, really. I mean, filthy. And they haven't replaced your carpet in, what, you've been here 18, 19 years? Yeah, almost and 20. You've never had your carpet cleaned once? You've asked repeatedly to have your carpet cleaned or replaced? and they No, re replaced, because you're supposed to replace the carpet. When I moved here, it was every three years, every, but uh, this first manager, I mean the second manager that was here, she was told to replace my carpet, to shampoo it, and to uh, replace my carpet in two years. Did she ever hack? No, she was busy, uh, you know, uh, uh, screwing around with the darn man, uh, tenant, and uh, uh, she never got around to to doing any of this stuff. Well, one time uh, there, uh, there there was an uh, inspection coming up. So she came, I asked her, I said, are you going to clean my carpet? You know, and uh, she uh, had forgotten or something, she said. So anyway, she came in with somebody to clean the carpet. And golly, the floor was so full of black spots after she left that it looked like somebody had had uh, taken some mud and went over the carpet with it. So I vacuumed it up, but gee whiz, every time I vacuum, some new spots come up. No, they don't want to replace it. Their excuse is, oh, we don't like to do anything, you know, when, while the person's living here, you know. That's just a darn excuse because some people that lived here at the first, when I first moved in, they would put their uh, they would put their furniture out because uh, it only takes once uh, three hours to completely put a carpet down, you know, for the uh, for both the uh, uh, room, living room, and and uh, bedroom. Because and people would uh, put their uh, you know uh, furniture out in the hallway and sit there and wait on it until they. Tell the uh, workers uh, finished uh, putting the carpet down, and then move stuff back in. 
And now they say, oh no, you have to pack up and put your stuff in storage or get somebody to move your furniture. We don't do that. And uh, we can't uh, replace the carpet. So, so I just said, let the carpet rot. But then it makes you sick. It makes you sick. And there is such a thing as normal wear and tear. Yeah, but, uh, this carpet I have, I'm the only one in here now. Every other carpet's been replaced, except mine. This is the same carpet that was put in here when it was, when the building was built, which was what, uh, 20, probably about 25 years ago. I think that's actually beyond the normal life of a carpet, period. Yeah, they don't want to do it, but they always, and something else that's supposed to be uh, illegal, used to be, I don't know if it is, I haven't looked lately, but uh, uh, you were not supposed to raise a rent unless you did some work on the person's unit. Capital improvement. But, no, every time they do, other people's completely remodel their other apartments or, or that could become vacant or do someone's, uh, you know, uh, re-carpeting. Uh, they raise the rent. They count that they as They raise the, everybody's rent. There's 53 units in here. They raise everybody's rent and and uh, and then uh, give, you know, when you ask for a new carpet, you're, you know, you uh, as a tenant, they absolutely uh, refuse. Uh, oh, no, we can't do that because you're living in it. We don't like to do that. They don't like to put carpet in. Well, gee whiz, don't raise my rent. Shoot, uh, you know, you didn't give me a new carpet. You didn't give me no new paint job either. This, also, the paint that's on here now is uh, as old as uh, uh, the day I moved in. It was still wet. They had just painted it and just sh had shampooed the rug. The rug was still wet also. So 20 years ago, well... The, the paint that's on here now, and you can see streaks on it where, uh, you know, steam has uh, dripped down the walls from, uh, you know, cooking and uh, also uh, uh, during the winter when, you know, you you put turn your heat on and stuff like that, you, you know, you it creates steam. So it, you can see streaks on my walls where the, the steam had dripped down the walls. And I showed it to several maintenance uh, people that, uh, you know, have come to look. And uh, they said, well, uh, you know, I'll uh, ask the manager. The manager said, no, they'll come back and tell me. So I just, finally I just quit asking, you know. You know. And then on top of that, you have to have them come in here and uh, steal all your medical supplies that you need to stay healthy. Yeah. yeah. And you have uh, rotator cuff tears because it made you so emotionally and psychologically traumatized that you were hauling heavy bags of your most precious items out of here, downstairs to the car, every time you had to go somewhere so that you could keep them for stuff to stay healthy and stay, you know... Uh, stay uh, functional from day to day so you got rotator cuff tears in both of your arms now you can't lift your shoulders beyond you can't lift your arms beyond 15 degrees and the doctor the surgeon has told you the orthopedist told you you had to have surgery for rotator cuff tears you're in physical therapy right now and that was caused from having to haul everything out of here every time you left the house because you didn't want it stolen by the damn gang stalkers which were staff here uh-huh as well as neighbors uh, running these damn noise campaigns on you and synchronized door opening uh, every time you come out of your apartment uh, two or three neighbors are popping out of theirs at the same time yeah oh that's not all oh gee whiz uh, you know uh, <clears throat> they have taken everything uh, because I like to have uh, you know for sanitation purposes I like to have like a uh, several changes of underclothes and uh, <clears throat> several, same thing with uh, uh, socks 
and the uh, underclothes, uh, socks, and uh, then I like to stock up because I don't like to go in the store and shop. You know, I always get things on sale anyway when I see it because uh, I don't like to be out of like toothbrushes, toothpaste, and stuff because I don't like shopping every day and can't afford to be shopping every day. So I always catch things on sale. Okay, everything I had in my underclothes, in my socks, my clothes that were hanging in the closet, they started taking right out of, uh, every time I'd go somewhere, I'd come home, and then I'd go to get something out of my closet or go to the drawer to change clothes. Things were gone, I mean missing. So I had to go out. I was left with no underclothes except what I had on. Yeah, they I remember. Taking all of my underclothes. I remember coming in here visiting you uh, before I even knew what gang stalking was. Now I didn't doubt you because I've been under it too, and I knew that this kind of crap was happening to me. Not exactly, but I knew strange stuff can happen. So I didn't never doubted you, but I had no context to put it in. But I kept seeing your uh, clothing in your closets disappearing. <laughs> all of your towels. All of yeah. your sheets. I know you had oh, all that stuff. Oh, they took my whole. Uh, I had them, my towels and things like this. I had them in the, uh, in the containers, plastic containers, all clean and put away. Cause there's no storage space to to keep things. You know, my closet was full until they stole them. I only had uh, I think five pairs of five, five pairs of changes of clothes left at one time. And I had a doctor's appointment. I said, oh, gee, what am I going to do? i got a doctor's appointment. I don't have any clothes to, you know, uh, to wear, you know, because all the, the clothes they left me were all old and, you know, uh, faded and stuff. I said, oh, heck, I have no choice. So they were clean, so I just grabbed the old ones and went, went over there. I was so embarrassed. I mean, <laughs> but they were clean, though. I was, they weren't dirty clothes. The, the clothes were not dirty. But that's all they had left me, about five pieces of clothes. Yeah, I know. I remember it. I couldn't understand what was happening, and I, I could see it happening. And so one day I went around and tried to search for your clothes and look for them in the house, and sure enough, they were gone. But then when it first started, you showed me that your house keys were in the spice drawer of the kitchen uh -huh. and they were sitting right there on top of the spices and I knew something was happening then I just had no context and that's when we started putting in the uh, video cameras and trying to lock up the doors and all of that stuff uh -huh. then some guy came in your room you know while I was here and stole my uh, little fire safe that I was keeping here with my papers in it uh -huh. and we had a burglary there and the cop when he came you know some young cop you know didn't believe and kind of looked at me with suspicion at first mm -hmm. you know and uh, also they were taking all of your pots and pans you, you had to go to goodwill to get all to get silverware and pots mm -hmm. and pans you didn't have anything to cook with and then you see your neighbors running around with your damn pots and pans and wearing some of your clothes <laughs> exactly especially one which incidentally i've had the same thing happen to me over there Mm -hmm. They like to display, yeah, we stole from you, hoping that you'll go off and attack them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then, of all things, after, what, eight years, they want to bring my old clothes back, just some of them, not all of them. And then they bring clothes back that are not even yours. Yeah, One yeah. of which was some red turtleneck that was a 2X large that was even <laughs> too big for me to wear. Oh, they've done the same thing with uh, with uh, my underclothes. Well, shoot, I I had to replace all my underclothes, you know. But I, not all of them, not like what I had. I had a supply, you know, where I didn't have to wear anything, uh, you know. Uh, same thing over, over, wash it every night and stuff. Yeah. And then they're just hoping that you go over here to this little hick town San Pablo Police Department, you know, one horse town uh, police department over here that must have a population of nothing but gang stalkers and complain to them so that you can sound crazy. 
which I did and got involuntarily committed for. <laughs> well, I would have too because that one time, uh, let's see, what was it? Uh, I went to the city, that's what it was. I went to the city uh, because, what was it? Um, oh yeah, about the lock change. I uh, got permission to have a key, uh, a lock, uh, you know, or the chain lock. And yeah, I could put a lock on it, and uh, I could uh, op open a, uh, open the the lock, uh, unlock it, and come on in from the outside as well as, you know, go out and uh, you know, put, it was just a safety lock to keep somebody out. But you didn't want to give a key to management, right? Right. But, but you see, the uh, property owners, yeah. property owners associations have lobbied uh, Sacramento to make it so that they have to have access at all times. They have to have keys at all times, which is very convenient for the continuing their gang stalking activities of breaking in your damn house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've had uh, the property uh, managers and the uh, property management company uh, call their friends in Sacramento to enact legislation uh, limiting the amount of relocation fees that you were uh, entitled to just as I started my battle with those damn criminals over there. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they've got, they've got politicians in their pockets to do their bidding. Mm -hmm. Well anyway, I went to the uh, city, uh, manage, uh, city manager uh, of San Pablo. I said, well, I'm going to find out because uh, what they did was uh, the, the uh, what would you call it, I guess a uh, uh, groundskeeper, some sort of, I don't know what he is, uh, one of their employees, you know, I think, I think he's called groundskeeper and other times he's uh, uh, supposed to be um, uh, maintenance or yeah, something. Yeah, chief gang stalker, but whatever is convenient, whatever looks legitimate. And uh, the other, now well, he occupies the uh, management, so, uh, you know, supposed to be, uh, you know, live in uh, a, a apartment for the manager that's supposed to live here, which is uh, the last two uh, managers have never lived here. Uh, for yeah, that's because he's chief gang stalker. And uh, his rank of gang stalking is more valuable than a property manager for you guys. Well, anyway, uh, he, what was I going to say? Anyway, he complained about, uh, he, uh, because he, I, he came in on me, uh, you know, when I was in here. He's, he used his uh, master key and came on in. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Gibney. I had the wrong, uh, wrong uh, apartment. Well, shoot, he's not supposed to go in the, the darn apartment uh, without 24-hour notice. And also, it has to be emergency purposes. But you see, that's but one of the... It, they were, it was not, he was coming in to get my spices and some of my, uh, you know, uh, uh, I guess uh, spices and some of my food. I don't know what the heck he's coming in here for. Also, I think uh, he had a problem... <laughs> Some sort of sexual fetish, huh? A fetish is right, uh, because uh, I found some strange crap in here. But anyway, what could I say? You know, because nobody believes you, and they got the master key, and they're allowed to... Well, so they're not allowed, but the judges uh, are often bought and paid for, so they give them uh, allowances. It's one of the few instances uh, in society where someone can come in your house and uh, not be guilty of breaking and entering, trespassing, or, or burglary. Probably you could have gotten him on trespassing if you could have proved that he came in without proper notice, but it actually should have been burglary. Yeah, it was burglary because they're not supposed to use a key without, uh, you know. Well, his intention was to come in here and steal something, and that constitutes burglary. Well, I've lost a lot of things, and, uh... Yeah, these criminals, they all need to be uh, put under the penitentiary. Actually, I won't say what I'd actually like to do with them or have done to them, 
but yeah, uh, at that's the very not the even the, at the very least they need don't to be even charged don't think it because for one darn thing shoot they might be reading your mind <laughs> at, well yeah no no that's actually uh, that's true funny. no that's actually true that's oh, you're that's kidding. no no that's I actually was true kidding. <laughs> well no there's documented proof of that Actually, there's a patent that uh, has that. You can go to some of those Disney theme parks, and uh, they've got rides there that will broadcast the sound of a a, 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 na a narrator into your into your brain, into your skull. All you have to do is touch uh, the panel or something, and you'll hear the voice in your head. There's no audible sound, but you know Disney's another uh, New World Order uh, company organization that's just as evil as can be. But yeah, no, you're right. They're working on a whole bunch of technologies that are so far advanced, they don't want the general public to know. But that's what, what gang stalking is. It is a program to experiment on people with all of these technologies and get away with it for the government and for private interests. We're the lab rats that they experiment on. That's part of what it is. And what are they, demons? That's right. Uh, you know, in the last, the Bible says that in the last days, so shall it be as it was in the days of Noah. Uh -huh. There's probably a lot of Nephilim running around right now because we're close to the end. Uh -huh. Human angelic hybrids that uh, you're not supposed to pray for because they're damned to hell. Uh -huh. But yeah, the Bible says in the last days it'll be in the, as in the days of Noah. And in the days of Noah... He was the only one that wasn't contaminated with angelic DNA. E. Well, who, uh, who, who are, who all is contaminated? Not all of us, are we? No, not all of us are. Uh, but the, you can rest be, be assured that since we're so close to the end, there's probably a lot of Nephilim running around. And when you're a Nephilim, when you have angelic DNA, it gives you supernatural abilities. You can see into that other dimension because you've got, you know, the DNA running through you. What do you mean other dimension? Well, you know, angels can see the spiritual dimension, the dimension that they come from, you know, as well as ours. You can actually see it. So uh, people who are contaminated with angelic DNA can see spiritual things that are all around us but are invisible to us. But they can actually see them. That's what the Tower of Babel was about. The uh, king that built the Tower of Babel, he had started to turn into a Gaborim, which is halfway between being human and being Nephilim. He had started to turn into, into one. And he could see an interdimensional portal in the sky. Yeah, that's what was happening. Okay, I'm going to end it now. Yeah.